Hello and welcome to the BMC Quick Core Series. My name is John Norbeck and I'm a software consultant for the BMC Mainview products. In this demo I will show you how to use the Mainview Alarm Manager to create an alarm and report threshold exceptions from a Mainview product view. To begin creating an alarm from a Mainview product that is running in Windows mode, display a view that has threshold set for one or more fields. From the selected view, type Make Alarm or Make AL on the command line, but do not press Enter. Place the cursor in the field with the threshold you want to report on when the exception occurs. Then press Enter. Main View Alarm Manager opens the first dialog panel of the Main View Make Alarm wizard. Now let's walk through the wizard. In this example, I am using the JDelay R view in Main View for ZOS. I entered make AL in the command line and moved the cursor to the total delay field and pressed enter. The result is the first panel of the alarm wizard. You will notice that there are values filled in. The initial values are taken from the view definition. You can change or delete values by overtyping the field. We recommend that you use view customization to specify the column filters prior to issuing make alarm. Specifying the column filters before using Make Alarm ensures that the records displayed in the view are the records you want to consider in the alarm definition. From here, press F8 to scroll down and see the remaining fields in this panel. By default, the schedule is set to evaluate every 60 seconds every day. We recommend that you do not set these values less than 30 seconds as it may cause excessive overhead. You can monitor alarm activity in the alarm performance views. Enter N or Next in the command line to get to the next panel. Use this panel to set exception conditions and persistence. Alarm persistence provides the ability to handle or ignore short-lived data spikes. For example, if a data element like delay percentage spikes up temporarily and exceeds an alarm threshold, you may not want to generate an alarm report immediately. Persistence gives you the ability to report when the condition persists for multiple evaluation periods. The severity values were taken from the view definition. You can change by overtyping them or blanking out the value if you do not want to report on that specific exception. Conditions thresholds can be true for any or all of the elements. You can add additional elements by using the select command. The persistence feature enables you to specify what constitutes an event that you want to receive an alarm on. You can define an alarm to start if the condition is true for N out of M sample. In this example, an alarm is critical if the critical value condition has been met for 7 of 10 samples and major if it has been met for 5 of 10 samples. Therefore, the current severity is major because the exception value has been reached in five of the last ten evaluation periods. In this example, persistence has been defined to report if the minor value is greater than or equal to 25 in three of three evaluation periods. The major value is greater than or equal to 40 in two of three evaluation periods and the critical value is greater than or equal to 50 in two of the three evaluation periods. The value for WARN was removed. Enter N in the command line to proceed to the next panel. Use this panel to report on alarm exceptions. In the message definition fields, view equals yes specifies that the alarm will be displayed in the alarms view and recorded to the main view logger for viewing in the historical alarms view. The WTO field is used to specify whether to write the message text to the MBS console. For repeat fields, no means that only the beginning, ending, upgrade, and downgrade alarm reports are displayed, regardless of how long the alarm is active. Yes specifies that the start message is repeated each time the alarm is evaluated. The message fields are used to define message text issued for the start and end of the alarm. The message can contain both variables and text. Variables are preceded by an ampersand in the text. The hyperlink field specifies the hyperlink path for the message ID field in the alarms view. 
The default hyperlink path is to the view containing the data that generated the alarm. Press F8 to see other fields in this panel. User values are user-defined values which appear in the alarms view. You can use these values to filter, summarize, or sort the alarms view. Help link identifies the user-written help topic saved in the BBHDEF dataset. This is displayed from the alarms view when the user executes the hyperlink from the help indicator column. The auto operator fields are used to identify the user ID, the queue, and the transfer command or P command that are sent as an event to Mainview Auto Operator. All alarms are events in Auto Operator. The BSM threshold component field is used as part of a unique identifier and events that are sent to BMC event management and service impact management. Enter N in the command line to proceed to the next panel. The last panel is the alarm definition make panel. Here is where you specify values for how the alarm definition is to be saved. In the library field, specify the library where this alarm will be saved. The default is the TSO user ID. In the group name, specify the alarm group. If the alarm group does not exist, it will be created. The default value for this field is default. Next field, specify the name of the alarm. The default is the view name. You can set multiple alarms for the same view, so you may want to change the alarm name to avoid any confusion. You can enter a brief description of the alarm in the description field. Additional comments may be added in the comment section at the bottom of the view. Specify whether to replace an alarm if one already exists with the same name in the same group. And then specify whether to activate the alarm when exiting this panel. In this example, the library was changed to active and the active alarms changed to yes to start the alarm when I exit this panel. You can also activate an alarm from the line command field in the AMD view, the alarms definition view. Enter alarms on the command line to see the active alarms in the alarms view. The easy alarms menu allows you to easily navigate to various alarm management views. Some best practices for using the alarm manager. It is recommended that you run the alarm manager in each CAS and do not rely on one instance of the BMC Mayview alarm manager in a multi-image environment. It is most efficient to run the alarm manager in each CAS to evaluate the data on that image and avoid the overhead of gathering data from other systems. This also eliminates a single point of failure. Another best practice is to refine the query filter criteria. Don't use general queries that produce many lines of output when a more specific query will accomplish the alarm purpose. In this example, DevStat SMS 055 is better than DevStat asterisk. Don't use form filters to limit output. Do use where filters. It's also recommended that you use local context. Avoid using context all or other multi-system context in the alarm definitions. The main view alarm manager is most efficient when running in a single image. Real-time views make the best alarms. Real-time views can pinpoint an immediate problem or troublemaker. When you couple real-time views with persistence, you will be able to make decisions more reliably. Interval type views may also be good. It depends on how long the interval is defined. Interval data tends to average measurements and flatten the results. If the interval sets are too long, then the alarm might not be that valuable. Short-term views are better than long-term views. That's what persistence is for. Do not set alarms on long-term views because too many history records are involved. Also, critical problems may be masked by averaging. This concludes the demo for creating an alarm. For additional information, please visit the BMC support site.